Welcome to a Starter and a Chaser podcast with your hosts, Joe Clark and John Passo. Why is Lake Titicaca not filled with boobs and poop? Hmm. Oh, hi. Welcome to another episode of a Starter and a Chaser podcast. I am John Passo. I'm Joe Clark. Joe, we're going back to Jalisco, Mexico today with tequila. Tequila. Not just any tequila, tequila trumbo. Ooh. Which is Ooh. actually, I love this bottle, man. I mean, it is look, a cool looking bottle. Look at the, uh, yeah. it's got the agave fields in the background there. Yeah. And they have an artist that does that for them. And, uh, oh, there, there we go. That's a little better shot of that. There you go. Nice. Yeah. So, this one, obviously, Jalisco, Mexico, where blue agave is king. And it was started back in 2010 by Marco Sedino and his son, Rodrigo. Now, Marco is a master distiller and he used to work for um, Don Julio as their master nice. distiller. Okay. And his son is the... A uh, little the, bit of experience? Uh, just, just a little, little bit, bit, you know, about 40 years worth of experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. You know, yeah, probably doesn't make anything good right yeah. after 40 years. You don't know much. Don Julio, <laughs> never heard of. <laughs> never heard of. <laughs> and then his son, uh, Rodrigo, is the uh, apprentice master distiller. Nice. So they, it's a family affair, which is always cool. Joe, we're sampling the Blanco today. What are you smelling on this one? This has got a really funky note to it, like mezcal. So it's got that kind of funky blue cheesy smell to it. Okay. That we've okay. Come fami become familiar to. Mm -hmm. um, definitely some agave sweetness in the background. Very woody on this one, too. Yeah. So would that be something with the distillation process, possibly? Uh, could be part of the distillation process uh, if they're... Um, or maybe not, not distillation, probably from fermentation. They might be uh, fermenting it in wood vats, okay, uh, which is, right. can be yeah. traditional down there. Uh, or it could just be part of that agave note coming Sure, coming they bring through. an earthy, very earthy side to things, kind of grassy, mulchy, I say, mm -hmm. sometimes. And it, this has got a little bit of that going on, so it could be that. Just more pronounced than I remember smelling previously on different um, drinks. We've done mezcals and stuff like that. Okay. But uh, like you always say, not all tequilas are, wait, tequilas not are technically mezcals, yes. not all mezcals are tequilas. tequilas. Correct, yeah. okay. correct. What's this the proof on this one? Uh, it's 40 proof. Oh, yeah. nice. So that's oh, good, yeah. Standard, standard, standard proof. And they have like the Guinness World Record of the largest tasting for tequila? Yeah, I uh, I don't know the full details on that, but man, I would have loved to be a part of that. Yeah. Yeah, they probably got everybody together on a Zoom or something, that, or they scheduled it, and like everybody around the world took a shot of Tromba tequila or something. But if you know the answer to that, Tromba, are you watching? Let us know. Leave the comments below. Be sure to hit subscribe while you're down there. So woody, earthy, blue cheese, some sweetness to sweetness? it. Okay. Yeah. Ah, what I'm do you think? I'm excited about this. I think we should dive in. Absolutely. Prost. Yeah. Hmm. Wow, that finish. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't transfer over like the, um, so some of these you get that kind of funky blue cheese uh, note on the, on the nose, but Usually that transfers over to the palate. It's there like when you're tilting it to your face, but it almost like washes away on the palate mm. for me. It actually got kind of citrusy there for a second. Yes. Lemon, really interesting. Like lemon yeah. uh -huh. and kind of bitter lemon peel as well. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and boy, it got like spicy on the back no, it's end spicy. for me. Yeah. Well, it was like, it, it like, yeah. it, it was... It was almost like licking a cactus right at the finish. It was prickly, it was yeah. sharp, but that front end was smooth and Citrusy. very distinct agave for me. It So I get some of that the agave sweetness and stuff, but I don't think I've ever pulled a powerful citrus note out of tequila before, or even I, mezcal. I have not either. Yeah. And That's I really know neat. they do a slower fermentation than most... It, 
typical tequilaries do, and that's supposed to bring out more aromatics and more flavors. So maybe that's lending that citrus note. To okay, us. I'm gonna uh, dive in again. Yeah, I know. We haven't even done our second. Or that lemon. Oh, oh. Yeah. super citrusy, super spicy, and then you got that agave sweetness. Earthy. Kind of chewy and earthy. Yeah, actually. Yeah, and. Yeah. Um, there's something else that pine. I'm getting a little Ooh, bit of okay. pine. Okay. Are, are you getting pine? Or yeah, no? I could definitely okay. taste that. Yes. Oh, wow, this is actually going kind of more on the side. Here. Like I kind of on the sides, it's drooping down for me. The a piney note bit, is yeah. more like even mouthwise, aer almost aromatic. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind it's like of vapory. Yeah, and, yeah, that's uh, it, vapory. and it's it's yeah. hitting sides as well for me, but more so the top of my the roof yeah, yeah, of my yeah. mouth. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. This is really interesting. This, this is the is, most unique tequila I've had to date. I, this is so different, but in ways that really make you sit back and go, I was not expecting that. Was not expecting that. No. I was expecting mezcal funkiness mm -hmm. out of this, which, which you normally get with a lot of mezcal. And I, I do not get any funk on no, this whatsoever. at all. Now this is- On is the nose, it's there. <laughs> Blue Weber agave or just blue agave? Uh, hundred percent de agave, but it doesn't say Blue Weber. But it's Jalisco, so I'm gonna assume that it's Blue Weber. Okay. Because sometimes blue, just uh, just blue agave, not the Blue Weber agave, can have some of those funk notes, some of that wildness, like we found in the Tres Papalote, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Blue Weber. Uh, I mean, Blue Agave episode. So maybe that's where that funk's coming from, or hmm. however they're. Uh, um, fermenting it. Maybe it's wild fermentation and that's yeah, bringing in that. Yeah, if you know that, comment below and let us know why does the funk on this on the nose not carry over to the palate. palate. Yeah, this is, this is really... I'm kind of glad it doesn't. <laughs> 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 Was it not that pleasant on the nose? The funk or? for me from that style of mezcal is never super, super pleasant on the nose at all. Okay. Uh, it's, it's really funky and blue cheesy and kind of like spoiled a little bit smell. But it uh, doesn't necessarily transfer over to the palate. You can have that funk and still have an enjoyable drink. It's weird. Mm -hmm. This one is like zero transfer. Of funkiness. I mean, it's 100% gone of funkiness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't pick any funk on this up as well. No, no Sly and the Family Stone in here. No funk. <laughs> no, no George Clinton. No, no 3D nothing. nuclear <laughs> nucleus project. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. So, Joe, Tromba. Tequila. What are your final thoughts on this, man? Pleasantly surprised from nose to palate because of that funk. And due to the palate and how citrusy it is, I've never had that from uh, tequila before. You mo mostly find that in like, you find some of these notes in gin. You know what I mean? Okay. More so. Um, it's almost like a mash of that for me, like a, a nice gin and a nice tequila. And they're just like, here you go. And uh, yeah, I enjoy it. I like it. Nice. I'm yeah. glad you enjoy it. I enjoy it too. As far as tequila goes, this is this is super unique. I definitely recommend people searching this out because I, I have not had a tequila with such a dominant citrus note before. Yeah. And uh, yeah. what you're saying about the gin aspect of it, uh, it, it like triggered in my brain. It's like, wow, this this is like some of those four peel gins that yeah. we've reviewed. Yeah. And, uh, but it has that that agave sweetness yes. and yeah. earthiness that 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 tequila is known for, in, in my opinion. Uh, so it, it's kind of like this weird crossover and it completely works. Yeah, it's like they say we're pulling the juniper out and we're going to stick agave in there. Mm -hmm. I would be really interested to try this in like a gimlet or a, any other mixed drink that would use gin as a base, but substitute oh, a tromba. Yeah. Okay. That might be really sure. cool. Yeah. Instead of a gin and tonic, maybe tromba. tequila and tonic. <laughs> TNT. Yeah. TNT. Yeah. Tequila and tonic. Oh, I can't even say that one. Tequila and tonic. Yeah. So if any of our viewers out there make that drink, be sure to call it the Joe Clark TNT special. This would work in it. I, I can 
taste it just thinking about yeah. it. It would work. We're going to have to taste it by just tasting it yeah. sometime. Yeah. So that was today's episode on Tequila Trombas. They're Blanco. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to tune in next time. Same bat channel, same bat time.